<sighs> okay, we have the final batch of cells and I'm just about to unload it uh, and I thought I'd just show you how I go about uh, packing and uh, loading these. Uh, so these cells are a bit difficult to move since they are so uh, prone to falling over. So uh, for starts I actually wrap all of them. Uh, I pack, uh, I've done them in groups of 6 and 12. This is a group of 6, final 6. Uh, and I've just wrapped a uh, ratchet strap around them in two levels to give them two points of like uh, hugging uh, so that they are uh, unlikely to basically scissor and uh, move ind independently. Then they are strapped to a pallet. Uh, across the top we have some uh, uh, packing wood, plywoody stuff up top to uh, so prevent any uh, crushing, as well as some cardboard on top of that to allow the uh, strap to kind of bend over nicely. And this is also tied down quite, quite tight indeed to the pallet. And then finally we have the pallet with uh, two ratchet straps, one big and one small, going to the hooks in the bottom of the van, just going crisscross on top to stop it falling over. And this is very, very sturdy. So it's time. Uh, uh, big ratchet strap for big men, unlike me. Time to get this. Oh, oh yeah, uh, the final trick is uh, my beautiful, beautiful ramp. This is just an aluminium sheet which I've got two bolts sticking out of. You can see the M10 bolts which fit into the holes on top of these uh, very, very cheap rickety uh, jack stands uh, which are just uh, installed more properly and adjust to the height of a van's uh, tailgate there. I want to just, uh, without any lifting involved, uh, put them on the uh, little trolley I have and run them over there and down into the basement. All right, and we now have no more cells sitting by the door. So let us behold the beauty. Is that not grand? So we now have 2.4 tons of opposite V Sony Shine gel cell batteries at our disposal. <sighs> A week's worth of work has finally come to this. So I actually ran out of these platters because you can't buy them, so I had to steal two green ones from a bathroom. <laughs> Uh, oh well. But yeah, we're pretty much done. Now the next step is going to be trying to figure out how to jump all these together because I did not get any jumpers with them. Uh, so I'm going to have to do some research if it's uh, most economical to uh, buy a bunch of jumpers, even new or used. I'm thinking maybe forklift battery jumpers. They often have two or four volt cells and a bunch of jumpers in a pack. Maybe they're uh, good enough. Or if I'm just going to have to buy uh, a bunch of terminals and uh, a crimp tool and uh, just crimp my own connectors. Uh, well, I have to see. I have no idea what's going to be most uh, economical. But yeah, uh, this battery turned out a bit more bulky than I imagined. We still have um, a path here which we can you know, use to access things here where I'm intending the inverter to go, but it's... A bit tighter than I wanted it to be. I could stack like those two cells either there by rearranging a bit, but uh, we'll see if I'll I'll have a think about that. <sighs> but uh, yeah, no. One issue we are going to have is uh, I'm going to have to cover these because I'm dating the battery circuits are going to be isolated from the mains on the inverter and normal people can enter this space. Uh, so this is all going to have to be tied down with wood or plastic or something to prevent you from accidentally touching this and dying. Uh, or, well, you know, putting suitable metallic tool, you know, throw it on there, wait for a while until the smoke starts billowing. 
Well, that's a bad day. <sighs> We're inside. Glorious battery jumpers. Uh, so welcome to the labor intensive section. Well, aside from carrying the batteries. Uh, so uh, I've set up shop. I've finally received my battery jumper from TME. Uh, they had exactly 100 in stock. I think I need 96 or something. So we should just about be done. Uh, these are uh, 50 to 70 mil uh, crim contacts. And you can see them there reasonable. Uh, sadly, we don't fit as well on a 50 mil cable as is what I have, uh, as I hoped, but it works reasonably well there, certainly there, uh, to an acceptable standard. So let's have a look at the uh, workshop. So uh, for starters, I have all of my cable scraps. These are used 50 square mil uh, rubber cables, high quality from an analog TV transmitter that was scrapped a few years back, uh, saved all the wiring. So start by uh, chopping them in my cheapo, actually brand new uh, bolt cutters. Then they go here. Then I have a uh, box cutter blade in a vise and a piece of wood. So I just take them, put the wood on top and roll them over to strip the ends. Works very well. Uh, and once we've done that, I have yet another vise with a crimp tool over here. So we just grab some plugs, put them in there, clank, and we have our jumper wires. And I'm uh, just about halfway done, as of right now. We have 23 here, which is exactly one battery. So this is enough to get to me started, actually. Uh, and here I'm working on the next set of 23. Uh, and uh, once we have those, uh, that's going to be all we need to wire our batteries up. Uh, so I still need to get uh, bolts that are going to be decent for the batteries. I only have ones that are too long and I'm not going to uh, make some jank setup. I'm going to get proper length bolts, torque them down to 20 newton meters, and uh, yeah, then we're going to be done. So another like uh, 18 uh, jumpers to go. <sighs> all right, jumper production over. So let's head into the battery room and see what we got going on. Test time for six voltage, these guys are doing surprisingly well. But here are all of our handmade battery jumpers. Are they not beautiful? Ah. How often do you get to do that? Through your own labour. So I'm quite happy with these. Uh, I've crimped them a bit weirdly. Uh, the uh, cable shoes are actually out of focus. The cable shoes are for 70 mil cable. The, the cable is uh, 50 square mil, and uh, the crimp tool I had set to 35 uh, to get it to crimp the cable a bit uh, tighter than it otherwise would. Uh, and it seems to have done a decent job. I don't mind this at all. It's uh, very tightly in there, uh, and I'm happy with it. I uh, say so I have been smart enough to do these jumpers so that they are uh, c capable of doing three things. Uh, number one, shorting out the batteries. Number two, jump from the batteries that way. And number three, jump from the batteries this way, which is going to be a main link ability. Uh, I wanted to have them capable, all of them capable of going across as well just in case I changed my mind and uh, uh, rearranged the battery somehow or we need to move it or something. It's it's better to have slightly too long jumpers than slightly too short ones and especially slightly out of focus ones. Uh, so these are considerably shorter than most of the commercial jumpers you can get. Most of them do a nice big loop verbatim. A 15 mil long, a uh, uh, complete uh, cable length of this is 11 centimeters, uh, which is uh, nice. So that gives us a total jumper length uh, per battery of uh, 2.6 meters ish, which is about half of what I originally calculated, uh, which means that our uh, jumper losses are going to be cut in half uh, from about 50 watts at full load to a mere 25 watts, which is excellent, I, I do think. 
uh, and uh, since uh, these banks are going to be running parallel, mm -hmm. we're looking at like 12 watts of loss in all the jumpers at like 70% of maximum uh, breaking capacity. So really good. Um, these are going to be super good. Uh, so uh, jumper bolts are very difficult, I've, I've found out, because the data sheets for batteries do not specify these. They just say a female M8, oh thanks a lot, they don't tell you the material, they don't tell you the length. I've heard with a the distributor they like, eh, bolts plus you get by as well the batteries. Uh, so I've kind of taken a chance, I've gone for stainless steel ones. Uh, I'm hoping we're not going to have any issues with galvanic corrosion uh, since these terminals are brass on the outside, but there's something else on the inside and I've got no bloody clue what that material is. Uh, Sunshine.org mentioned stainless steel uh, bolts for the A600, so uh, I'm, I think we're going to be fine. Uh, Sunshine.org is a battery website dedicated to Sunshine batteries and uh, uh, they seem to have a decent clear what they're doing, having done it for like 30 years. Uh, so, yeah, that's about it. It's time to get my somewhat electrically safe uh, torque wrench and uh, start torquing down terminals. This is just a cheapo, no name torque wrench that I've wrapped in Kepton tape and uh, electrical tape and a shrink wrap with hot glue in it. So, it should be reasonably, you know, mm, yeah, not perfect, but it uh, sure as hell is better than having the whole thing made of, out of exposed metal working with us. Are done. We are constructed 1500 amp hours worth a 48 volt battery. Ah, is that not a lovely sight? Everything went well. I realized the smart thing to do while assembling these is once you've got to a, a, a string going, so uh, once you've done a few, uh, it's clever to start by uh, connecting the jumper to the next unconnected battery. So if we've done one through four here, and we are working on this jumper, uh, I would start by putting it there, putting the bolt there, because then if I have this bolted down to, well, in fact, let's use a different cell. Let's say we've worked our way over here, uh, and we are about to bolt up number seven. If I start by connecting this end of the jumper wire, it can swing to short out to all kinds of stuff. However, if I connect to this one, which is not not yet connected to anything, it doesn't matter if it swings around and shorts to another cell because the other end of it is just not going anywhere. So, smart way to just put that one in place, make sure you have a bolt threaded down a bit, then you put it over there and make the circuit to the rest of the string. That's just a much safer way of doing things. You might also notice that I'll put a small number on all of these cells, and that is the voltage in millivolts. Uh, I've actually gone through and measured every single one of these uh, to make sure that none is uh, severely out of balance and uh, none of them are. Uh, the lowest value we have is uh, 2.129 and uh, the highest value I think is uh, 2.138 volts. Uh, so that's the difference if we talk uh, 12 volt uh, batteries. So that's the difference between uh, 12.82 volts and 12.78 volts. Uh, so absolutely fine. Uh, every single cell in here is uh, pretty much perfectly balanced. There's no balance charging that uh, needs to take place uh, to uh, get this up in spec, which is excellent. I would expect nothing less really, but Hey, you never know, these are trash cells after all. But if we shove our probes in these, we can really see that. Uh, so we have 51.237, so 51.24 basically in this one. And in this one, we have.
51.20 so that's like a, a 40 millivolt difference between <laughs> between the two batteries that's that's not a lot that is not a lot let, let me just calculate how many percent that is uh, that is a voltage difference of 0 0.078 percent I'm gonna call these banks um, equally charged so uh, yeah <laughs> that's a, it's a, I'm thinking still tonight I'm gonna have uh, the luxury of uh, actually connecting something up because uh, I actually have no UPS at all uh, since I dis di discarded the old battery bank uh, and there's a ton of power out to just right about now because of the middle of winter storms are inbound and uh, yeah there's my UPS there's the disassembled battery box and yeah complete lack of battery so I think I'm just gonna kind of jump up a couple of fat ass wires uh, into that room uh, so I can get some power to my UPS uh, until I can get these guys online. <laughs>